Good morning. Welcome to Zion. We are so glad you're worshiping with us today. If you're visiting with us, please fill out the welcome sheet that can be found in your pew and drop it in the offering plate or give it to an usher. Be sure to take your announcement sheet home with you and read carefully through all the announcements. There, there are a few that I'd like to draw your attention to. Thank you to Pastor Jim for sponsoring our radio broadcast today in celebration of his brother, David. Thank you to all who volunteered your time or came and ate with us at Table of Plenty last week. Our next meal will be on the fourth Monday of April, the 24th, from 5.30 till 7. First Sundays of the month are name tag Sundays. We invite everyone to wear a name tag to allow everyone to get to know each other, including our guests and new members. If you didn't grab a name tag on your way in, be sure to put one on before heading to the fellowship hall on um, following worship. This upcoming week is Holy Week. We start festivities today with the men's breakfast following worship and the opportunity to put together whole Holy Week boxes. There will also be first Sundays for the middle and high school youth at 3 o'clock. Then we will have Monday Thursday worship during first and first communion at 6.05 on Thursday and Good Friday services at 6.05 with a community service at Good Shepherd at noon. We'll wrap up the season with a celebration on Easter Sunday at 9 o'clock a.m. We received word yesterday that Leon Tobin has passed. Um, Leon's memorial service will be held later this week. Please keep Virginia and the rest of, the, of Leon's family and friends in your prayers this week. We received word this morning that Ruth Bosmo passed last night. Um, please keep her family in your prayers. With that, we begin our professional gospel. Please stand. This is a traditional way that we begin Palm Sunday with the gospel about the entrance into Jerusalem. When Jesus had said this, he went on ahead, going up to Jerusalem. When he had come near Bethphage and Bethany, at the place called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of the disciples, saying, Go into the village ahead of you, and as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. <clears throat> Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you untying it? Just say this, the Lord needs it. So those who were sent departed and found it as he had told them. As they were untying the colt, its owners asked them, why are you untying the colt? They said, the Lord needs it. Then they brought it to Jesus, and after throwing their cloaks on the colt, they set Jesus on it. As he rode along, people kept spreading their cloaks on the road. As he was now approaching the path down from the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to praise God joyfully with a loud voice for all the deeds of power that they had seen, saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory to God in the highest. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, order your disciples to stop. He answered, I tell you, if these were silent, the stones would shout out. The processional gospel. We continue with our processional song with the palms, and the kids will be walking around, so we will sing.
blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who journeys with us these 40 days and sustains us with the gift of grace. Amen. Amen. Let us acknowledge before God and one another our need for repentance and God's mercy. Holy God, we confess to you our faults and failings. Too often we neglect and do not trust your holy word. We take for ourselves instead of giving to others. We spoil rather than steward your creation. We cause hurt, though you cause us to heal. We choose fear over compassion. <coughs> as we seek to follow in your way of life. Amen. For the good news, God so loved the world that God gave his only son so that all may receive life. His promise is for you. God embraces you with divine mercy, forgives you in Christ's name, and revives you in the Spirit's power. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We continue with the song of praise. He is exalted. Let us pray together. O God of mercy and might, in the mystery of the passion of your Son, you offer your infinite life to the world. Gather us around the cross of Christ and preserve us until the resurrection through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and time, I'll invite our kiddos back up front, and as they come forward, we will sing Jesus Loves Me. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong, they are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me, the Bible tells me so. Good morning. Thanks for helping with the palm processional. Did you have fun? Good. All right, so I have a picture here. What is this? It's a dog, absolutely. Do you notice anything interesting about this dog? It has words on it. Can you read some of those words from where you're at? A puppy can play with him, so can the lady. 
Oh, it can. Do you see some of those words? Can you read any of them? Fuzzy is one of the words. There, there are, like what? Cute, fuzzy, lovey, warm, cozy, right? So these are all words that make up a dog or describe a dog, adjectives, just like you said. Um, and so these words are all so many descriptions of what makes up a dog. So even more so, if you took all these words away, then there would be no picture at all, right? Because our dog is made up of words, and if we took all those words away, we wouldn't have a picture left. Right? And so the interesting thing about this is the farther away that you are from the picture, the harder it is to read all of these words, right? All right, Chase, I'm gonna send you on a mission. Can you go stand towards the back of the sanctuary and tell me what you see? Yes. Mom, why is it so pretty? All right, Chase, what do you see? You see a paper? Do you see a dog on there at all? Not really. Not really? Okay, now take about five giant steps forward. How about now? You can see a dog? No words, but you can just see the outline of a dog still? Perfect. All right, come join us again. It's only when we get really close to this dog that we can read all of the words, right? So in today's scripture story, we hear a lot about Jesus having a party or a celebration, a parade, and that's why we got to walk around waving palm branches, because today is a celebration of Palm Sunday, where Jesus was welcomed into Jerusalem with palm branches, and he walked right into a parade. But most of the people who were waving palm branches and shouting Hosanna and singing didn't even know who Jesus was. They were just part of a parade, and they just started waving palm branches around. Yeah? Some people thought he was a prophet. Some people thought that he was going to be their next king because they called him the son of David, and David was a king. Um, but most of the reason why people thought all these different things about Jesus is because they didn't really know who he was. They only really saw him from a distance. And so maybe they heard a few stories about him, or they went to go listen to him teach once or twice. But what they didn't do is they weren't able to get close to Jesus and really learn the words that he was speaking. And when you don't get close to Jesus and really learn those words, it's hard to share what he's living. I think my dog picture walked off. <laughs> Everett ran off with my dog picture. But when you get really close to it, you realize there's a lot more that makes it up. And that's exactly how Jesus is, too. When we, like the disciples, listen to Jesus and follow him closely, then we get to learn a whole lot about him and learn a whole lot about the good things that he is sharing. But it's hard to sometimes have a celebration for a person that we don't really know. And so one of the ways that we can really get to know a lot about Jesus is to read the scripture and hear all the stories that he shared. Thank you. Because we know that this dog is made up of words that describe him just like Jesus. And the more that we read and get to know about Jesus, the more that we learn about what makes him. And all the stories that he shares and all of the good news that he shares from God for us. And reading and talking about these things helps us learn more about Jesus. And when we get to have a celebration like today, where we celebrate Jesus, we get to really learn who we're celebrating and get to really learn more about him. Yeah. And that is our good news for today. So can we say a word of thanks and praise to God? Can we say a prayer? Dear God. All right, can you guys repeat after me? Dear God, thank you for all the words and the stories about what Jesus said and what he did. Thank you that by knowing Jesus better, we get to know you better. We get to know you better. Amen.
Hi, thanks so much for coming forward today. You guys can head back to your seats. We continue with our reading. The reading is from the book of Philippians, the second chapter, beginning with the fifth verse. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the gospel acclamation. The Holy Gospel for today is from Luke, the 22nd chapter. Jesus is talking to the disciples here, and he singles out Simon Peter. Simon, Simon, listen. Satan has demanded to sift all of you like wheat, but I have prayed for you that your own faith may not fail. And when once you have turned back, strengthen your brothers. And Peter said to him, Lord, I'm ready to go with you to prison and to death. Jesus said, I tell you, Peter, the cock will not crow this day until you have denied three times that you know me. He said to them, when I sent you out without a purse, bag, or sandals, did you lack anything? They said, no, not a thing. He said to them, but now the one who has a purse must take it and likewise a bag, and the one who has no sword must sell his cloak and buy one. For I tell you, this scripture must be fulfilled in me. And he was counted among the lawless. And indeed, what is written about me is being fulfilled. They said, Lord, look, here are two swords. He replied, it is enough. He came out and went, as was his custom, to the Mount of Olives. And the disciples followed him. When he reached the place, he said to them, pray that you may not come into the time of trial. Then he withdrew from them about a stone's throw, knelt down and prayed, Father, if you are willing to remove this cup from me, yet not my will, but yours be done. Then an angel from heaven appeared to him and gave him strength. 
In his anguish, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat became like great drops of blood falling down on the ground. When he got up from prayer, he came to the disciples and found them sleeping because of grief. And he said to them, why are you sleeping? Get up and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. While he was still speaking, suddenly a crowd came, and the one called Judas, one of the twelve, was leading them. He approached Jesus to kiss him, but Jesus said to him, Judas, is it with a kiss that you are betraying the Son of Man? When those who were around him saw what was coming, they asked, Lord, should we strike with the sword? Then one of them struck the slave of the high priest and cut off his right ear. But Jesus said, no more of this. And he touched his ear and healed him. Then Jesus said to the chief priests, the officers of the temple, and the elders who had come for him, have you come out with swords and clubs as if I were a bandit? When I was with you, day after day in the temple, you did not lay hands on me. But this is your hour and the power of darkness. Then they seized him and led him away, bringing him into the high priest's house. But Peter was following at a distance. When they had kindled a fire in the middle of the courtyard and sat down together, Peter sat among them. Then a servant girl, seeing him in the firelight, stared at him and said, Well, this man also was with him. But he denied it, saying, Woman, I do not know him. A little later, someone else, on seeing him, said, You also are one of them. But Peter said, Man, I am not. And about an hour later, still another kept insisting, Surely this man also was with him, for he is a Galilean. But Peter said, Man, I do not know what you are talking about. At that moment, while he was still speaking, the cock crowed. The Lord turned and looked at Peter. Then Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said to him, Before the cock crows today, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Well, the goal today is to do a short summary and kind of a walk through Holy Week to remind us of the things that are going on. So today, as we know, Palm Sunday, Jesus enters Jerusalem in triumph and the people are cheering for him and it's a it's a big party day. The people assume he's a king, going to come back, and things are going to change. And they are, but not in the way they expect. It's also because, called, wow, that jumped up about four times. It's also been called Passion Sunday for the last 15, 20 years. It used to be just Palm Sunday, and then the had honchos who work with the text said, well, we should focus on the whole week of his passion. So you basically have the option to talk about Palm Sunday or focus on the whole week. So Jesus enters today, and they spread palm branches down, and they spread their coats and cloaks down, and Jesus comes in. Now, this is an interesting little diagram because it goes from Holy Week on the far left to Monday, Thursday, and it skips Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Well, what basically happens on those days, on Monday, Jesus cleanses the temple. He goes to the temple and the money changers are making a living, you know, and overcharging people and stuff like this. So he drives them out of the temple and gets the Pharisees and all the powers mad at him, of course. Tuesday, he goes into Jerusalem again and kind of condemns the Pharisees and the Sadducees, and he does a few prophecies. And uh, he goes back out to the Mount, Mount of Olives and prays. Wednesday, uh, we don't know. We, we assume it's kind of a rest day for him, but he stays out in Bethany. Uh, and he kind of focuses on what's coming. 
So Wednesday, we assume, is kind of his day to rest. Then Thursday, he's talking to the disciples and kind of prepping them about the evening. And Peter, uh, you got to love Peter. Here's a guy who, who um, always wants to be first, uh, assumes he's, you know, the best of anything, and always wants to prove it, and kind of brags a little bit. So, he, you know, he's like, well, Jesus, I, these guys may run away, but I won't. You can trust me. And Jesus says three times, Peter, before the rooster crows three times tonight, you're going to deny me. Well, we know that happens. Peter doesn't. Jesus says this real interesting phrase to him, and it's been translated a lot of different ways, uh, depending on your translation. Jesus says, um, how can I say this? He says, I have prayed for you that your faith may not fail, and when you have turned again, strengthen your brethren. Now, he knows something's going to happen to Peter. And that word, strengthen your brethren, and when you have turned again, that has been really some interesting things. So in the New Testament, uh, as I mentioned, the New Testament was written in the word, in the Greek language. And um, turned again, when you have turned again, that really word, word up there is epistrepsis, and that's the Greek word for that. And it, the, the dictionary says that is a change of mind uh, or a course of action for the better or the worse, a change in the sinner's relationship with God. So, and this is tough to understand, that first line at the top where I've got the box around the U, that U is plural. Jesus is talking to all the disciples there. So Jesus basically says, Simon, Simon, Satan demanded to have all of you, that he might sift you like wheat. But then he's, he narrows in on Peter. He says, but I prayed for you. Because he knows Peter is going to really need comfort the next few days. So good news here is we we can assume that G we're included in that, that all of us are included in the prayers of Jesus, and he's praying for all of us. So Jesus is arrested on Thursday uh, by Judas, and he's taken to the, through the courtyard to the high priest's house, and all the disciples but Peter, you know, they're gone. And Peter kind of disguises himself and follows along with the crowd, and he tries to blend in out in the courtyard because eventually, after the high priest gets done with the little mock trial at night, the Roman guards are going to haul Jesus back through the courtyard right by Peter and probably take him to Pilate or Herod or somebody. So, Peter's in the courtyard. Crowds are there wondering what's going on, and... A couple more things on this, on this uh, word. Hang on. This is what happens. I turn too many pages at the same time. All right. This translation that I'm going to next is Simon, Simon, Satan has asked to sift you as wheat, but I prayed for you that your faith may not fail. And when you have turned back, strengthen your brothers. So this says it's turned back. And then there's a couple more. I'm just throwing these out at you. Jesus says, but I prayed for you that your faith should not fail. And when you have returned to me, different ways to describe the process, but look at the instruction. No matter how you describe it, what's Peter supposed to do? Strengthen your brother. No matter how it's described, that's what he wants Peter to do. And the last one of these, 
Satan hath desired to sift you like wheat, but I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, how about that for an interesting phrase for that little Greek word? When you are converted, strengthen your brethren. Luther says we need to be converted every day. We need to be reminded that we're Christians and we need to remember our baptism and allow the Holy Spirit to work through us every day. But I just think that one little word, epistrepsis, being, being converted, turned again, is so important. So, Peter follows. He's in the courtyard trying to blend in. And up comes a woman who says, wait, wait. You were with me. And Peter uh, basically says, go away. I wasn't doesn't really work. This happens a couple times more. And I think uh, finally Peter says, I don't know this man you're talking about. So that's Peter's you know, kind of final denial, third time. And right after that, he says that two things happen. The Roman soldiers are hauling Peter, hauling Peter, hauling Jesus through the courtyard on the way to his next person to see. So they are bringing Jesus right by Peter. But right after Peter says this, we have the rooster crowing. And Peter goes, oh my. And the next thing that happens, the Lord turned and looked at Peter. Jesus is right near him. Uh, still, you know, arrested. And Peter sees Jesus looking at him. And I would guess the bottom kind of drops out of Peter's life about that time. Now, we don't really know uh, what Peter and, you know, did for the next couple of days. We assume, uh, as the Bible says, he went out and uh, wept bitterly, is the phrase that is used to describe it. The Bible doesn't really mention Peter being at the crucifixion. It mentions John being there, one of the disciples. But unless I've overlooked it, I don't. I don't think I can find a reference to Peter being at the crucifixion. So Jesus is crucified on Friday afternoon, and the disciples are kind of all going their separate ways. And then they basically have decided to meet Sunday night because the women have come to them on Sunday morning and mentioned a couple of us went to the tomb, and, and the tomb was empty. And so the disciples get the word, and they kind of all want to get together and talk about this Sunday evening. And the good news for us is that just like uh, Jesus restored the disciples and restored Peter, he restores us. And he shows up resurrected. And the only disciple that isn't there is Thomas. That's why we call him Doubting Thomas. He has to show up next Sunday. But Jesus tells them, this all had to happen for a reason. And now I have been resurrected, and I will be with you for 40 more days explaining why this had to happen. So we have... We have Peter and the story of him denying Jesus three times in the courtyard with no other disciples around. So the, the question for all of us kind of is, how did the story get in the Bible? Who saw it and, and decided to write it down? Not something you'd really want to journal or be proud of. And by the process of elimination, the only person who could have told this story and shared it to the other disciples 
was Peter himself. And probably something like, guys, ladies, we all blew it. We all denied him. Do you think you denied him? And maybe Peter's bragging again. You know, guess how I did it. So Peter shares the story of how he went from moments of glory and being first to just having the bottom drop out. And that might be what Jesus means when he said, when you are converted, when you have turned again, strengthen your brethren. And sometimes the best way to strengthen someone who's down in the dumps or feels like the world has dropped out is to find a connecting point where you tell them, I've been there, and I can help you get through what you're going through. I kind of think that's how Peter dealt with that. So for us, uh, you know, the good news is, in a lot of ways, I think we are all like Peter. We have moments of maybe being, winning our contests and being first. And, uh, you know, if you're a fan of the Final Four, the basketball tournament, if you miss the final shot, you, you know, you feel like the whole world just dropped out on you. And if somebody else makes it, they're like the hero for the night. But we all have those moments. And when the world kind of drops out on us, or when we do something that we think is just awful, terrible, you know, embarrassing, shameful, Christ is still there for us. He says to us, I will be with you through this. I will help you get back on your feet, and when you do, come to yourself again. Strengthen one another. One of my favorite Bible verses in the entire New Testament. When you have turned back, strengthen your brothers. So it's kind of a message for us as we move into Holy Week. Amen. We continue with our next song.
has made us his people through our baptism into Christ. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. <clears throat> and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Sustained by God's mercy, let us pray for the church, the world, and all of creation. Save your church, O oh God. Enable us to boldly confess in every time and place that Jesus Christ is Lord. With the humility of a servant, equip congregations, synods, and other ministry settings to proclaim your extravagant love for all. Merciful God, receive our prayers. Save your creation, O God. Every living being you have made has purpose. Give us renewed appreciation of farm animals who labor in the fields service animals who accompany their human companions, and beloved pets who live alongside us. Merciful God, receive our prayers. Save the peoples of the earth, O God. Restore dignity to those who are scorned and persecuted for their religious beliefs or political activism, and deliver them from the hand of their enemies. Bring peace to places where conflict runs deep. Merciful God, receive our prayers. Save those who cry to you in any need, O oh God. Watch over all who are incarcerated or awaiting trial, and stand with those who are unjustly accused. Be present with those feeling isolated, lonely, or fearful, especially Gladys, Joe, Kathy, Viola, Norman, Joey, Marvin, Jackie, Ruth, Jerry, Connie, Dwayne, Ken, Barb, Esther, Dwayne Cole, Michael Chapin, the families of Leon Tobin, and the family of Ruth Bosmo. Merciful God, receive our prayers. Save us in your love, O oh God. Guide the work of church musicians, pastors, choirs, readers, deacons, technicians, acolytes, and all who worship, in, all who assist in worship. Sustain them in their leadership as they accompany congregations through this holy week. Merciful God, receive our prayers. Save us at the last, O oh God. We give you thanks for your saints of old who embodied your servant's love. As you came to their aid, so deliver us in times of trial, that every knee would bend in praise to you. Merciful God, receive our prayers. We lift our hands to you, our prayers to you, O God, trusting in your steadfast love and your promise to renew your whole creation. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. All are invited to greet one another with a sign of Christ's peace. You may be seated. And the joy and peace we are given through the cross of Jesus Christ. Please consider your gifts to Zion that will strengthen our ministry and mission together for the sake of all in need of hearing Christ's love and grace for them. You can give online, in the mail, or in person here today. Children are invited to come forward and place their offerings in the For Children Everywhere box at the front of the sanctuary. Thank you for your gracious gifts to Zion and for your partnership in the gospel of Christ. We thank the Zion Choir for sharing a musical offering with us this morning.
Would you stand as you're able? Let us pray together. God of good gifts, receive these and all our offerings as we present them in faithful service for the sake of your gospel. Prepare our hearts to receive you in this meal as you pour out your very presence through Christ Jesus, the wellspring of eternal life. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Each of us is broken by sin and less than God has created us to be. But this does not disqualify us from being touched by God and serving God in any capacity, large or small, broken as we are. God uses broken things. It takes broken clouds to give rain, broken ground to give grain, broken grain to give bread, broken bread to give thanks. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, gave it to the disciples saying, take it, all of you, this is my body given for you, do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Come and receive Jesus, our strength in the wilderness. You may be seated. Just a reminder, we have gluten-free wafers here if you need that. And parents of kids, if the kids are going to commune, have them cup, cup their hands. If they're going to get a blessing, please have them fold their hands. Thank you. Oh, 
Would you stand as you're able? But remember, there's uh, food. The men's group has made pancakes, uh, sausage, and French toast for you. <coughs> Excuse me. And now I made the bowl. <coughs> Time out. And I'm the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, which you have received, strengthen you and keep you unto eternal life. Amen. Let us pray together. Embodied God, at your table we have tasted the goodness of Jesus with the eyes of our hearts open to your promise. Empower us to hit the needs of our neighbors and touch the world with your love. Amen. God, the giver of love, Christ, the resurrection and the life, and the Holy Spirit of rebirth, bless you in this Lenten journey. Amen. Our final song is communion. You may be seated for this. <laughs> 